Hello, Mayana with you. So we're in February 2024 and um, we have had the beginning of the year with all of its expected usual proposition about, uh, you know, it's a new year and there's new decisions to be made, etc. And of course, that's, that's part of the programming uh, that we live in because that should be a question or that can be a question addressed as it arises throughout the year, not just in January for the year ahead. And if you have made any New Year resolution, well, you probably already, <laughs> um, what are we, six weeks into it or so, you probably already give up on them. And that's because the programming has more momentum than any habit you've already um, that are already in you, which is what I call your construct, you know, a lifetime of habits that has become a construct of its own, like an identity of its own almost. So I don't want to spend too long about uh, making decisions because, you know, they will come and go throughout the year. Um but Valentine is coming up and the idea of love is coming up and I want to bring you a little bit of a different angle on the idea of love. So let's start with tuning into our inner being. And so this body breath connection, BBC, is all about becoming aware that you're here. And so, good to start with the body. And through your consciousness, it feels like your mind for now, is to pay attention to the connection you're making with the chair, you're sitting on the sofa, etc. So feel the back of the chair pressing against your back your back pressing against the back of the chair and the sole of your feet on the ground and your hands resting somewhere on your laps maybe. And you can notice straight away how that takes you out of the mind and into the body. So from there, you're breathing anyway. But you can watch your next breath, next few breaths. And as you do that, you can just check if these breaths are shallow up to your top of your lungs or around the throat area, or if they are really deep, which means expanding your stomach outward because the lungs are being filled with beautiful fresh air you don't have to force it you don't have to quote unquote take a deep breath the breath will deepen as you put the light of consciousness on it and allow it to do its work by noticing any holding up of the shoulders or tensing of the solar plexus or, or the stomach. Putting the attention on the breath allows it to expand a little deeper and do its work. And interesting to know that there's an amount of stale air that never gets recycled in the lungs because we're all running for one thing or another, getting busy, not breathing properly, maybe emergency breath when there's a lot of stress, mouth open, too many breathing per minute. And so know that when you allow yourself now this few minutes of just paying attention to the breath, it's a wonderful thing to do before you go to sleep, by the way, or as you awaken in the morning, is to allow the breath to do its 
healing. Breath is information. There's fresh information. If you've wanted to do something new this year, then the information is in every breath you take. But because of the construct or the programming we carry, we recycle the same habits and the same reality, but it doesn't have to be like that. And everything begins with the breath. You can even count the breath to get out of the mind. That's a meditation technique that some monks do. Or you can even pay attention to the tip of your nose, the hair in your nose, <laughs> moving as you inhale and exhale. That will also get you out of the mind. And it's wonderful doing it here now, sitting down with you. But this is also wonderful if you're a veteran practitioner on your self-realization journey for an amount of years or your whole life. It doesn't matter. Everybody is at the start, always. We all are, perpetually. And so that means that there's no end to using this. It's really mindfulness, but using it as you go about your busy day, not just sitting down in your meditation in the morning and at night, if that's what you do, but or active mindfulness, I call it active, just to be in with your inner being, which is your consciousness, as you go about your busy day. Now you're really, really winning if this is where you're at. So, And it takes just a couple of seconds to switch into the consciousness. But I'm just going slowly, just in case it's useful to you. Then we have the thoughts and the emotions. And, and you can just acknowledge them. The Sufi meditation is a wonderful meditation that I use sometimes. And it's just to recognize every thought and every emotion as passes by. It can be men, women, dogs cars, you, you can even write or imagine the name of your thought or the thought or the emotion on white t-shirt of passers-by. And the whole point of this is that you let them pass on by. What happens when we get lost, drowning in thoughts and emotion is because we get up and talk to these emotions and these thoughts. And before long, we are the thought, consumed by the thought or the emotion, drowning in it. It's okay to feel it if it's an emotion. But if you're drowning, it's time to rescue yourself. It's time for the life boy. The life boy is consciousness, is your inner being. It's your safety rope. Okay, so this is the inner being. Now you're all connected. Don't, don't lose it. I just want to touch just a little bit on, uh, because January went by, I just want to talk about projects and plans and ideas and wonderful new ideas. If you have, well done. It's, it's fantastic. If you don't, it's okay. But the, the reality of having plans and projects and dreams and all kinds of things is... And um, whether you were inspired or you're copying someone else because they do it and it looks good and you want to do it too, which, by the way, may deter you from your true purpose, but that's maybe for another month. The point is you have a plan and you're going with it. And so this is a particular magnetic frequency when you're following up on creating something or redoing something or reimagining a job or a way you approach the task at work, or if you're a business owner, how you treat your staff, how you do your accounts, how you uh, market your product, etc. 
And everything benefits, of course, from a review. But know that in the striving of wanting to succeed, obviously you want things to go well. This is also a magnetic frequency. What does that mean? We are frequency before we appear in the room or before we say anything or before we think or feel anything. We're just a pack of magnetic frequency. And today we can see that because 30 years ago, we didn't have all the machines we have today, uh, the neuroscience on it, etc., and the way to look at magnetic fields, which we have today. And so if you could look at your own magnetic field, uh, the field of the heart, heart intelligence being superior to that of the mind, heart intelligence, unfortunately, is filtered by the mind then, and that's why some of the construct gets in the way. But as a magnetic frequency, if you look at yourself now, go ahead and see your energy or feel your energy. If you can't see it, you can feel it. And notice how the grappling for things to go well, the worry is called worry. It's worry is completely useless. It's it's in the way of every one of your success. The worry is what in your field sends the wrong magnetic discharge. So fretting along with worrying, along with running around. Whereas you could have just simply seen that it is a program running is what makes everything uh, go in a direction that you don't necessarily want it to go in. And so for success, here is a recipe, which is to never give up if you're still inspired to keep working with a project but letting go at the same time. So that sounds ever so contradictory, doesn't it? Don't give up, but let go. <laughs> so the don't give up part is about, of course, carrying on with your company, with your job. Maybe you want to get promoted. Maybe you had enough of this. Maybe you want to try another job. All perfectly wonderful. And the letting go is... You know, whatever whatever stage you're at, whatever decision you've made, new decisions, or maybe a new perspective on the same thing that you've been doing, or maybe you want to do something new, is once you do all the work for it, once you've put the very best of you, once you've applied everything you know, and your very, very best, it's to let go of it, you know. So if we were in a boat, it's to keep in the direction of your direction, wherever you're going, is to, I don't have the English word all of a sudden, but the thing that directs the boat, you keep that in line with the direction where you're going. But you're also not grappling and not making it fail because you're too much worried, too much grappling. Is this going to go right? Are we going to get to the other shore? Is this really, is the shore going to be there when we get there, etc.? All of this is in the way of being able to arrive at your destination, whatever that might be. So this is the letting go process. And this is part of achieving whatever you're working on. As I said, it can be a new direction. It can be a new outlook in the same thing. This can be applied, of course, to your family, to your uh, marriage, uh, to the relationship with your children, to how you save your money, how you invest your money, any of it. Of course, at the base of all that is how you feel about yourself. And I'm getting to that in just a second. So just the recipe for success is to keep in line with where you have plan on going until you feel that's not right, obviously. But let's say that you're headed there is to keep traveling in that direction, doing your very best, best of knowledge, best of attitude, best of everything. And then letting go at the same time, you know, so you're not 
anticipating the worst as it were. You're not putting blocks in your own way, which is definitely going to make things go askew. So there you have it. And of course, as you get inspired to shift your direction, you can, but never out of worry. Because that means you've stopped listening to inspiration and you've moved into some of that programming, which is causing you to say things like, oh, am I good enough? Or is that possible? Or whatever. So nice to take a breath on that, to allow this to, if it sits well with you, to land in parts of you that benefit from it. And when you perceive things outside yourself, so we're all very, very good at seeing other people's businesses and affairs, and we're very good at thinking we know <laughs> something about other people and why things work and why they don't work. And all of that is part of your construct. Now, only you. There's no one out there. And it's not at all what you think it is. But if a thought arises about judging someone else, as I said, success, failure, or anything in between, it's nothing to do with them, but, but it's everything to do with you. So that allows you to clean these constructs in you. Opinions are fantastic things. Judgment, they're all useless for anything external but yourself. Get yourself free from these and you can get to your own cleaning and follow your own inspiration. You know, it's that story of, uh, oh, I I'm, I'm, may not say it exactly the way it is, but it's basically this uh, farmer who had many, many horses. And one day he woke up and all the horses were gone. And so the neighbors came in and they said, oh, my God, poor you, all your horses are gone. There was, I don't know, maybe three, four horses, let's say. All your horses are gone. You're so poor now and you should have locked the gate. You should have done this. You should have triple locked the gate, whatever, right? And the farmer says, maybe so. And a few days go by and these three or four horses, they come back with 10 horses because they went out on a gallivanting exploration and they met some mates and these came back and now the farmer has 10 horses. And so the people judge again. They think they know what's going on and they say, oh my God, <laughs> you're so lucky. Wow, you got 10 horses, you know? And so it goes, right? Another thing is going to happen after that and so on, so on. So, if you're judging something outside yourself, know that it's something to do with you. You don't know what's going on for anyone. And also, it uh, shouldn't be your concern. The, your concern is you. So let that be of solace to you and help you on your way to get where you need to get to. So I'm going to say a little bit about self-love now because we're moving into this Valentine thing. <laughs> which happens once a year. Kind of sad, really, that it's once a year people celebrate love uh, in a couple. So it leaves 364 days of unaddressed <laughs> gratitude and 364 missed opportunities to have celebrated, if you are with someone, a beautiful relationship and if you're not with anyone, and even if you are, of course, the relationship is based on your own inner family and how you really get on with yourself, what you really think about yourself, how much you love yourself. And this is what your whole reality revolves around. And, and this is why you perceive other people to have something or lack something or feel something or miss out on something. As we just said, it's nothing to do with reality, just you. And so let's go ahead and inhale some love, if you can, some acceptance with yourself. Love is too big a jump. 
for many, many people. So maybe you can start with self-forgiveness. Oh, I forgive myself for having judged myself or anyone else. Any, any opinion is a judgment. Even when someone gives you a compliment, it's still a judgment. You know? So that's okay. No problem. We're walking, talking programs. 99.999% of the time, we are repeating machines. It's okay. Let that go now. And so we have these wonderful uh, tools. I love you and thank you. Powerful tools uh, from the Ho'oponopono. And this can be used for this self-love. In fact, if you're in a relationship, you probably expect your partner to love you a particular way, or you are expecting full stop. That's a horrible, horrible program that leads to poverty. Poverty of feelings, poverty of mind, poverty of the heart. Because how can anyone love you to a degree that you don't love yourself? That's a mad equation, and yet we all do it or we all did it because we didn't know any better, that's okay. We're not blaming anyone. We're not blaming ourselves. We're just letting it go now. So I love you and thank you. Can, must, begin with self. And as we, as I said, we can start with self-forgiveness. Maybe we can move into compassion, having compassion for oneself because of where you come from, because of not having been so connected with the inner being before. And so, you know, partners did all kinds of horrible things. Of course, they were there for you to see it. But if we didn't know that before, and we all have that story, then things were not so pleasant. So that's okay. We can just forgive ourselves for having been wherever we were at. It was perfect and meant to be. Wouldn't have happened otherwise. But for now, we can have that compassion, that understanding, that gratitude of knowing that also if it hadn't happened, we wouldn't have looked at how to feel healed from that or better from that, which in a long way round brought us to connecting with our inner being. The inner being is a spirit within the incarnate part of us that is far wider than any other part of us. And yet that is invisible. So we don't even know it's there until we get on the self-realization path. So that's an easy part to love because it's this eternal, pristine, bulletproof, I say sometimes, because nothing happens to the spirit. It chooses to come back and incarnate if that's along your lines of belief, if it's not, you can delete it. That's okay. But anyway, in this life, it is still the part of you that is this pristine, untouchable, eternal, pure love, pure consciousness part of you. Things happen to the other three attributes, this which you embody through your physical body, and then your mental and emotional bodies. Things have happened to these three attributes, lots and lots of things. But not to your spirit, not to consciousness. Consciousness is just consciousness. So this is who I mean when I say your inner being. And when you love, begin with self, yourself, through the eyes of that divine spark, which is you, incarnate, when you touch through the hands of this divine aspect of you, when you see through these eyes of this divine intelligence, this inner being in you, then things look quite different. And you can celebrate Valentine, no problem. You can also celebrate it at the other 364 days of the year. 
several times a day, highly recommended. A prescription of love, several times a day, as many times of the day as you can, in fact. And you can allow in the safety of knowing that you are a spark of that divine intelligence, you can allow anything that needs to come up to arise so you get a chance to be able to delete it or clean it and be more closer who you are and much closer to your inner being. Thank you very much. I love you. I'll see you again in a few weeks. Well, we won't see each other, but we'll be together while we sit here together. Thank you.